The confrontation was not created by the police. The confrontation was pre- Hey, Composing Gloves here. I'm wearing a hat, and today we're talking about bineural fusion. Now, you remember from... Now, I'm going to be relying on anatomy um, from here on out, just so you know. So, and you've been doing your practicing every day. Please do your practicing. Like, that's what draws connections into your brain. So, bineural fusion, really interesting topic. So, what it is, is you, we have these things called interoral sound cues. So, the, so, we have intensity differences and arrival time differences. You might be saying, I know these are things, but... Why are they things? I want to be a little more deliberate in what I'm doing. So this is going to give you some answers to that and also what you're hearing. So stuff gets to your ears. You might be saying, why does it sound that way? Well, if sound, as we've talked about before, if sound hits one ear before the other ear, it's going to be perceived as coming from over there. If it's louder in one ear than the other ear, but they arrive at the same time, then it's going to be perceived as coming from wherever it's louder. Now, if you have something that's really loud on one side and... It's, it's, it gets a little weird. So if you have something that's really loud on one side, but it reaches your other ear first, we have issues. And so your brain starts going through all these things. But for the most part, let's just remain, uh, you know, things as they normally happen. Typically, that's how it works, and that's why your brain does that. So you have louder and or intensity differences, louder or softer, in one ear than the other, and arrival time. Now, why is this a thing? And the other question that comes up is how does this affect me stereo wise because it begins to get weird so hopefully you'll start seeing i want you right now to really quick think about your speakers so the speakers emit sound and you can take advantage of this to make the sound sound like it's coming from over here or over there there are actually ways to make it sound like it's behind you and in front of you but we'll talk about those later another thing that's really weird is you have headphones that obscure things and we're gonna as i break down what's gonna happen i just want you to be aware of this and then i want you to think about surround sound real life i want you to think about how sounds happen in real life so as these things are going we have stuff going into our, our penna our penna collects the sound and disperses it and delays frequencies this is so useful so what happens is you've got two ears really handy dandy because now you can compare one ear can say hey what did you get what what what, what uh did, when did it hit you and then they, they can compare and contrast, and therefore they can tell you where, where crap is. It's called binaural fusion. So it goes into our ear, goes through our... I'm not going to explain that because I've talked about that in the last like several videos. It gets to your brain stem, specifically something called the pons, pones. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but it's P-O-N-S or whatever. And it calculates the differences between the two. And this is called binaural fusion. So what's interesting is... My question is, is this now a stereo signal or a mono signal after it goes through your brainstem? Now, let me back up a little bit. So, or is it a surround sound signal? Like, I just don't know. I don't even know if I should be thinking of it in terms of discrete audio channels or whatever. If, if maybe that's the wrong way to think about it. But it gets to your brain. Your brain says, oh, it happened here first because it hit this year a little bit later. And it delays it with your penna giving you even more in, de in detail information about where things landed. And then it says, oh, it was over there, it was over there, la, la, la. It also says, oh, it was louder over here, and then it was this and that. And what your brain does is it's got this huge list of all the time sound has hit it before. And it can say, oh, well, in my experience, when I have gotten this response, it's been in this type of an environment. So you can tell your environment from this. And it has... Uh, it." And it's over there. Like, it's, it's that way. And your brain is so good at this. It's done this so much that it can detect this with up to one degree of accuracy horizontally. And then vertically, it can do like that, but pointing. Yep. That's uh, three degrees. Three degrees of accuracy. Now, what's curious about this is this idea of... So, you can close your eyes. Well, if we could back it up. You can close your eyes. I could be talking in a room. And I could say, oh, it sounds over there. Like, just by listening. Like, it's crazy. Like, you're really accurate at this. Now, a whole bunch of interesting things happen. So uh, there's a whole surround sound thing that I wanted to bring up and sort of just question you about because the only difference between all these different mediums is the way that this acoustically, how it's presented to your ear that can then be translated into neural, into the neuron uh, electrical signal so that your brain can handle it and do stuff with it. So what's curious is, okay, is there a difference? When it reaches your brainstem and that processing is done, or is it still separate? Um, I, I think it is because your brain's not simple. And also, is it even, it's two signals. This is my reason I think it's two signals to begin with is because you have two tympanic membranes, eardrums, and those are moving back and forth 
in one direction. So they can only send that information in, in one way. So therefore you've got one channel over here and another channel over here. And that's just the way it works. Cause they, but then you've got your hair cells and they can send off various channels simultaneously, right? We can have the high frequencies going off at a different time than the low frequencies. And even though sound travels at a consistent speed, all frequencies are going to hit you at the same time. Um, your, your ear is delaying all this stuff. So you, you are actually receiving a whole bunch of signals at once. Like it's not just two at that point. So I'm just like, I'm just not sure anymore, guys. Like I've been reading books that are even more confusing on the subject because they start listing all these studies that get even weirder. And so, and what your brain does with it. And it's just weird. So anyways, so there's that side of things to you. And then there's the whole stuff is in, in the sound field. And what's cool is now, this is a little more basic, a lot more basic, but what's cool is the way you can detect space from this. Now, what I want to talk about real quick is we're going to talk about all that stuff later as we get into specific uh, types of effects and what they can be used for. But this is like laying the ground for, for why that works. It'll allow you to do things on purpose instead of because it sounds cool. Because it's because it sounds cool is a cool reason, but that's not a good reason. I mean, it is a good reason. It's not... You, there will be a day when that gets old as a reason that anybody can say that you were, you're going to want more than just, it just sounds cool and things that will not only sound cool, but work for you in a mix. It's another, that's a whole nother topic, but let's say that like, I want to point out how atomically important parts of your ear are for this job, because first off, if they, they they're the way that you sound gets to your brain. So of course they're important, but you might be saying how important are certain parts? Well, you got this thing called the penna and we talked about how it disperses sound so that you can hear it and tell where it is. Well, if I were to chop that thing off, you would have a number of issues. And the reason the issues are so severe isn't always at first apparent because you might be saying, well, you just chopped off the thing that funnels sound into my ear canal. Well, yeah, that's an issue. So we have that part of a problem. The other problem is you, it's also a quarter tone resonator. And so consider this. Now we talked about quarter tone resonators earlier, but essentially it, it acts as a, there's a specific harmonic system happening right there that affects the delay. That's all you really need to know. We'll talk about those later because that's just an advanced topic. But anyways, when it enters there and goes through that process, I have now altered that. And so when I chop your pen off, the acoustic system that existed has now been changed. It's still there because it's still a quarter tone resonator. It's your ear canal and your ear is still there. So there's that side of things. There's, um, and now when I take it off, not only is the delay gone, so the delay just gives you enhanced information so you can see where stuff is, but also, your brain has come up with a map, a bunch of a bunch of impulse responses. So what happens when a sound is over there? And your brain says, well, when these things happen with these delays, this is what that sound usually is. And with these frequency responses, this is what that usually is. And it's amazingly fast at doing this. And that happens at the brainstem, right? Well, not necessarily the frequency response thing happens in a whole lot of places, but the basic timing stuff happens at the brainstem. So... You might be saying, okay, well, that, that's going down. So what happens what, what happens when you chop that part of your ear off that's responsible for creating those impulses? Well, the answer is, or maybe just, you, this applies for ear canal too. It's why it's dangerous to use Q-tips. If you alter the resonance in there, you're going to be altering spatial positioning and frequency response. So you're really jacking yourself up now. But anyways, chop that off. You've just made all of those impulse responses totally wrong. And so you're going to be so lost where things are acoustically. Like the way you perceive space through sound is just going to be freaking messed up. So a lot of people don't realize how sort of inter this is some interesting consequences uh, that go on with stuff like this and people probably attribute it to the uh to those tubes what are those tubes called um i have a picture of them do 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 the semicircular canals people probably attribute it to that it's not it's not even related to that that's all that's a different topic so it's really just a really interesting deal so hopefully this video is informative you got some stuff a lot of this stuff at first might not seem that useful but later on when you it's like math you do basic math and then you get into a new thing oh adding and stuff i do this all the time very useful then you get into the stuff that's like matrixes you're like, how the freak am I ever going to use this? Like, I've heard that in like every math class. Why do I need to know this? Ah, la, la, la. Well, 
you're gonna if well unless you give up then you don't need to know this but if you're watching this video you want to be an audio professional so for mathematicians they're gonna get to this point where they're doing really advanced calculations to calculate something really important important it's their job you want to make a plane and build softwares and make i don't know cell phones and program them and junk you're gonna to need to know this stuff and to varying degrees of course so they, they kind of give it to you in a course manner that might not be structured towards specifically what you want but it also teaches you how to think which is another plus i guess but there'll be a point where you're gonna be like man i'm really glad i knew that so that's why i just want to congratulate you that you're learning this kind of stuff because it just makes you way more powerful as a producer because you're just going to have more options, especially deliberate options. You're going to be like, I'm doing this because of this, and that's why I'm doing it. This guy over here is doing it because he thinks it sounds cool. He thinks it sounds cool, but little does he know he's now created like six additional problems from the way he did it. And I can accomplish the same thing or at least a super similar thing without those six problems because I know this and I'm going to do it this way. And so that's kind of like what I'm getting at here. So if you have any questions, you know, let me know. Subscribe. Support me on Patreon because that's where all the cool kids are going these days. And have a blessed day. Here it is. Thank you.